The internet is absolutely blowing up with the news that Colossal Biosciences has resurrected the dire wolf, extinct for 10,000 years. Is that or is that not the case? What's the real story? Let us talk about it. First of all, yes, dire wolves were real creatures, not just fictional animals made up by George R. R. Martin for Game of Thrones. They roamed North America for over 2 million years until they went extinct around 10,000 BCE. This week, Colossal unveiled three pups named Khaleesi, Romulus, and Remus, created using CRISPR gene editing and ancient DNA from fossils dated 11,500 to 72,000 years old. While scientists are impressed with the genetic engineering, they're also pushing back on Colossal's claims and here's why. Mainly because these aren't true dire wolves. They are genetically modified gray wolves with parts of their genome altered to look like dire wolves. Then Dr. Rollins, a paleogeneticist, told the Washington Post that we can't truly de-extinct creatures because there just isn't enough well-preserved ancient DNA for cloning. Colossal also says that gray wolves are the closest relative to the dire wolf, but in reality, dire wolves and gray wolves diverged evolutionarily between two and a half to six million years ago and are in a completely different genus. What Colossal did was identify key genes in the dire wolf genome, which is about 19,000 genes that differentiate a dire wolf from a gray wolf, then edited those specific genes into a gray wolf embryo. TLDR, these wolves are more one 100,000th dire wolf than 100% dire wolf. But this is just the beginning for Colossal, which plans to de-extinct more animals like the woolly mammoth, the dodo bird, and the Tasmanian tiger. While the science is impressive, it also raises important questions. Wouldn't this funding be better served conserving our current endangered species? Where would these animals live? Who would be responsible if possible human-animal conflicts arise? Because the truth is, these animals have not lived on a planet or coexisted with humans for thousands and thousands of years. So how would that work? And would companies own or trademark these de-extinct species? So these are all important discussions to have. It's always going to be this delicate balance of celebrating these scientific innovations while also addressing the complex ethics surrounding it. If you like stories like this and science we're sharing, then give us a follow everywhere at TL Science. And if you want a deeper dive on this story and the science behind it, I cover this in my weekly newsletter at TL Science on Substack.